fourth generation Miata due out soon, we thought now would be a perfect time to take a final look at the current Mazda Miata, the world's best-selling sports car. But who better do this than Auto Guide resident Miata expert and owner, Derek Kreinler. One of the worst cliches when trying to describe a car is to say it handles like a go-kart. I race go-karts, and I can tell you that they're noisy, uncomfortable, painful to drive after long hours, and they make your body hurt. The 1997 Mazda MX-5 here does all of those things. It really is the most fun you can have on four wheels, but after an hour of driving, you're guaranteed to have back pains. 20 years later, though, we have this, the 2011 Mazda MX-5. More comfortable, quieter, civilized to drive, loses none of the charm of the original car. It's a winner. Styling-wise, the car is noticeably different from the first Miata, but it still keeps some of the signature cues. The taillights in particular are very faithful to the original car, but from the back wheels forward, it tends to take on its own character. The front wheel arches are quite flared and muscular as opposed to the very narrow profile of the original car. The whole car itself is wider and has a more aggressive stance, and the new front end echoes what Mazda's been doing with the rest of their lineup. This right here is probably the most substantial change that doesn't have to do with the car's performance. Rather than a soft top, like the old car, you now have the option of a power retractable hard top, and this is actually two pieces that collapse together. This piece flips upwards, and the roof folds neatly behind here. Unlike other folding hardtops, it doesn't take up any trunk space, and the whole thing weighs about 80 pounds more than a soft top unit. There's really no reason not to get this on the car if you plan on buying an MX-5. The power steering system on the new car is electric, unlike the hydraulic system on the old car. It might not be as precise as the old car, but it's still got a great level of feel for an electric system, and we were pretty surprised to see that it was free of the lag and the deadness that a lot of the other electric systems usually have. Unlike the original Miata, which honestly felt like a bit of a bathtub to sit in, this car is actually kind of spacious. I'm 5'10", and I've still got some room to spare. I can move my legs. I'm not cramped in by the insides. I've got some room to check my blind spots. And the same great ergonomics on the original car is still here. The shifter is right here. It's still got that great, tight little feeling. All the radio controls are within easy reach. Opening the roof is as simple as flipping this latch and selecting one of the two buttons on the dash. It's actually quite a good piece of engineering. Of course, not everything's perfect. We've got these cheap little mirrors right here, which don't look well constructed at all. We've got hard plastic all over the dash that really feels like something that could have come out of a mid-90s American car. And we've got other things, like this useless cubby hole back here, which probably couldn't hold anything bigger than a pair of sunglasses. And the gas cap release, which could break off at any time, so I'm not going to risk it. At this price point, frankly, we expect better. And that's where the European rivals tend to make up more of their business. Even after 20 years, some things don't change. The first car had a 1.8 liter engine out of a Mazda Protégé that made 133 horsepower. 20 years later, we've got a 2 liter motor out of an old Mazda 3 that makes 167 horsepower. Mazda had to cut costs somewhere, so this is where the engine comes from, in-house. Truthfully, it's not that bad. It revs to 7,000 RPM and makes a great growl when you really push it hard. Maybe next time around, Mazda will input something a little more exotic, more along the lines of the Honda S2000's motor. But for now, we're not complaining.